Attack. Hey everybody, welcome to the Snack Attack. My name is Anders Porter and I'd like to uh, introduce this show to you, tell you a little bit about what it is that I'm doing here. Snack Attack is meant to introduce you to new flavors that you might not normally try on your own. So what I'm trying to do is just introduce you to some stuff that you might not have heard of, you might not have been eager to try before, and I'm going to make it so you feel good about snacking, basically. That's about it. Welcome to Snack Attack. Enjoy the show. Alright, so the first snack I'm going to taste today is dark chocolate-covered chocolate edamame. So, um, let's go ahead and give them a try and see what happens. They're chocolatey, but I think the reason why is because the chocolate is so rich. Um, the soybean has very little flavor, if any at all. Um, they're good. I would say that I kind of wish that there was a way to make that soybean jump out a little bit more. I wish that there was some, some sort of way to maybe either make the chocolate a little bit thinner or give the soybean a little bit of salt or a little bit of flavor. Um, as you can see, that's not stopping me from eating a whole bunch of them. So, they're pretty good. So, so far I'm impressed. Alright, let's move on. Okay, moving right along after the chocolate covered edamame, we come to the next snack on today's show. It's called Coco Loco. Uh, when I purchased these today, I was not interested in the fact that they are nut and gluten free. It's a great thing, but that doesn't have anything to do with me. I didn't really care about the fact that they were free of all common allergens. Again, right on, man, but that's not what did it. What did it was the name, Coco Loco, right? Who doesn't want to eat something called Coco Loco? I'm really anxious to try them. Um, I'm a, I sort of feel like they might be very, very healthy. Um, that's not a bad thing. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, though it can be. All right. First of all, the picture on the box, much more appetizing than the actual product. Uh, it's a real firm consistency. Uh, not a lot of, you know, juiciness going on here. Um... Dry, uh, very, very pasty, I'd say. They taste super healthy. They taste like when you go over to Grandma's house and you sit down and you have a cup of Sanka and she gives you some carob cookies. That's what these are. Um, I, uh, I don't need to eat any more of these. I can tell you right now that these are not my favorite thing on the planet, but I do love the fact that they're made at a dedicated bakery. What that bakery is dedicated to, I have no idea, and I don't really care. Um, <laughs> Alright, moving right along to the next segment. Um, this is a whole bunch of new segments today on the show. The, f the next one is a new, brand new, new segment, which is called Tea Attack. Check it out. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Tea Attack. Tea Attack, 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 attack. <laughs> as part of the Snack Attack. Um, today and every day on Tea Attack, we go over some, one or two interesting teas from around the world. Today we have a tea, uh, an ancient tree brand tea uh, called Peru Tuo Cha. And uh, I have a feeling this is going to be a really tasty tea. Okay. So we got some boiling water here. We got our little tea press thingy, and uh, let's get this tea out. Wow, oh, that smells good. Except I'm not really sure what's in here. Okay, one piece. This must be the tea. All right, let's put this in here, and uh, we're gonna get right back to you with some fresh tea. All right, the uh, moment of truth is here. We have our uh, freshly brewed tea, and um, let's just uh, pour it in the 
glass here. Oh yeah, steaming brew that smells delish. Um, now one part of the tea attack I need to explain is that I personally don't really care for tea. So I, at this point I bring in a guest to try the tea. And uh, my guest to, to uh, taste the tea is the Tea Tester 2000 robot. Tea Tester 2000 reporting for duty. Tea temperature 93 degrees Celsius. Tea smell factor 83 degrees snuffitude. Tasting. You know, if you're like me, you wake up in the middle of the night hungry for a snack. And uh, that's why I always have something close by. Today I have snack number three, dark chocolate covered mulberries. The reason I bought these today is because they're super good and they're a super food. Something that it says right on the package here. Anything that's super good, super food, isn't that right, Taylor? Um, it's definitely worth trying. So they're energy packed according to the package. So we're definitely going to uh, Give them a go. Well, there's definitely a berry in there. But, you know, similar to the edamame, it's the chocolate that's overwhelming. And that may be why um, mulberries aren't sold without chocolate on top of them, <laughs> because they don't taste like anything. Vitamin C, they make a better earth, they're so nourishing, lots of antioxidants, be a better person, but don't taste anything while you're at it. They're not bad. Um, I would give these to my friends. I won't give them to my cat, however, because chocolate's bad for cats. All right, let's go into the kitchen to wrap everything up. All right, let's take a look at everything that we, um, we snacked on today and give them a rating. The rating system works like this. If they're bad, they're called a toss -em. If they're okay, like you share them with people, they're called a, they're called a share -em. And if there's something that's so good that you would not part with it, you want to keep them for yourself, they're called a hide -em. Uh Let's start with the first thing that I tasted today, the dark chocolate-covered edamame. These are okay. I mean, I can't say that they were super, super fantastic. Um, they're, they're chocolate, though. Uh, so these, I, I kind of wish that they had a little bit more soybean flavor or something to spice up that crunch in the middle, but it just wasn't there. So they're far from being a hide them, but they're also not a toss them. The edamame gets a share them. The next thing I tried today was actually this, not this, but this. Um, Coco Loco, love the name, and that's it. These were um, soft and chewy-ish, kind of. They, they, they just weren't very good. They didn't have no flavor, they had no taste. I, I don't uh, imagine myself buying these ever again. My cameraman, however, really, really loved these. So you know what? They're not only a toss -em, but I'm tossing them to him. Uh, the last thing I tried in bed today are the organic chocolate-covered mulberries. Um, again, very similar to this one over here. Not much going on in the flavor package on the inside. You know, it's a mulberry. Everyone knows how flavorful those are, right? So um, these are a share -em. Like you can put them out, they're like a novelty snack. Every now and then you have a party and you have people over and they're like, hey, what's that? And you're like, oh, those are the jacket covered mulberries. Yeah, that's what those are for. Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's the snack, snack attack. attack. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I hope to see you again. So we'll see you next time. Snack attack.